Today, I'm taking the out of cocktail. <laughs> Disgusting. Craft cocktails. Expensive drinks. We are here at Birds and Bees, a craft cocktail speakeasy in downtown LA where we're gonna be learning mixology. And then we're going head to head in a craft cocktail making competition. You guys are killing me. What the hell? Aloha, Mick! Uh -oh. You broke an I egg! I broke an egg. Oh my god! This is what I'm known for. Like one day I want to be a spokesperson for a liquor brand. Like I'm serious about that. I did used to be a chemist, so I'm very good at mixing liquids and following precise instructions. I'm looking great. I'm feeling great. I'm ready to jerk it over your head and then turn it around. My name is Jake LaRue. I am the bar manager mixologist here at Birds and Bees in downtown Los Angeles. Mixology to me is really having a deep understanding of the ingredients and the spirits and everything that goes into creating cocktails. Mixologists to me are the chefs of the cocktail world. I love bourbon. I love bourbon on the rocks. I love old fashions. I love Manhattan. My biggest competition is Eugene. He actually was a bartender. Little do people know, I did go to bartending school after I graduated college. I have, I think, the basic skill sets for bartending, but I'm not a mixologist by any means. I've never created a cocktail. I don't drink a lot of cocktails. I'm more of a white wine guy. I love cooking, but really don't know much about drinking. So I don't know how this is gonna go. I don't actually drink alcohol anymore. So for me, I'm gonna be making mocktails, which is really Really, just fancy juice, and I love juice. Bars like this, any bar really, it's kind of like my second home, away from home. As a child divorced, I was always looking for another home because I had two already. Might as well add 20 more on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna learn to do is how to make shaken gin martini, a dirty gin martini. Martinis are a really interesting cocktail. There's a lot of different ways that you can do them and there's a lot of different techniques that you have to know. A normal martini is going to be gin, dry vermouth stirred. That's the traditional martini. However, a very popular martini is going to be a shaken, dirty gin martini. In your opinion, what is better, the shaken or the stirred martini? It depends on how dirty you like it. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. It really does. Oh my goodness. Oh. We're, just, we're starting off the day hot. <laughs> if you like a very dirty martini, it's nice to shake it. When you stir something, you're not trying to add bubbles to it. You're trying to just chill it. When you're shaking something, what you're doing is you're oxidizing and introducing bubbles to it. The bubbles are going to lighten the cocktail and add a lot of like lighter flavors on the palate. So what you're gonna do first is you're going to take your jigger, which is this right here. The line on the inside is one and a half ounces. All the way to the top is two ounces. On the other side is going to be one ounce to the top, two ounces of gin, right to the top, oh, into wow. your jigger, and pour it into your shaking tank. Go okay, first. but I gotta find the gin first. So the gin's gonna be the second bottle in. Vodka. Vodka, it's gonna go vodka, gin, rum. Now, did you hold your bottle in a cool way? Yes. Hand there like that, uh -huh. and then turn it that way. Uh -huh. I hold it like this, it provides less wear and tear on the wrist. It's oh, harder. Oh, it is a lot harder. Right. <laughs> on the one hand, I saved my risk from wear and tear. On the other hand, I have gin on my other hand. <laughs> That's a good on the other hand joke right there. That's a six dollar joke. The next thing we're gonna then do is take our dry vermouth, a half ounce of dry vermouth. Half ounce. Right there, nailed it, perfect. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so you slam it, clip it, boom. The next step is going to be the olive brine. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce. So far, it definitely reminds me of being in a chem lab. He doesn't like olives. He doesn't like olives? Or olive But juice. he's nailing the pinkies up, which is one of the most important parts. <laughs> next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our ice, and you're going to ice the tin to the very top. Right, you must have your giant, like, whiskey ice in the fridge. We do have the, the real big, yeah. yeah, the big whiskey cubes as well. So yeah, we cut. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Ourselves. We cut about 300 pounds every two weeks. You wow. cut them? Yeah, yeah, I did it yesterday. With what? Uh, a saw and a chisel. It's crazy the, the effect a giant cube ice yeah. <laughs> has on people. Wow! How is it so big? Yeah. Place the big tin on the top, pop it with your hand like that. And what you're gonna do is when you pick it up, you're gonna flip it over so that the small tin is now on top. You're going to shake forward and back. And then when you're done shaking, you'll notice that the, the tin itself will have a nice little amount of frost in it and it'll sound slushy. Shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. Oh my god, oh my hands are freezing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is terrible. Oh they get, my they god. They get real ah. cold real fast. 
That's the shake of a pro right there. Damn, he's so hot. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Cool. Ah. The face helps. The face helps. Really sell it. Don't look at me. Oh, <laughs> don't look at me. Wow, it's freezing. Right? Oh my god, my hand's stuck to it. That sounds slushy. That sounds, that sounds slushy. pretty good. All right, okay. All right, and you're going to slap this against your hand this way. And you'll hear it quick. Wow. Nice and quick. This is a coupe glass. Originally, it was believed that it was a gift to Marie Antoinette, and it was shaped after the shape of her breast, so it was the perfect container to drink her champagne out of. Yeah. Drinking right out of Marie Antoinette's breast. Breast. Nice. Nice. Yes, out of the inside of it. So, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your Hawthorne strainer, and you're going to strain it, and that's it. No dirty martini is complete without the olive garnish. Oh, Dropped yeah. In. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Nice and done. Oh, Zach. no, Zach. No, Zach. 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 Why? No olive going in my drink. He has a thing about olives. No. Cheers. You know what? The strawberry note on top is not bad. It's Thank you. a little bit bright. If you just smell it and then you go in and you get that olive brine. I could go dirtier. Because I like it to almost taste like I'm eating food. There is always something to be said about the beauty of a simple, well-crafted drink that is both light and sweet and perfectly balanced. And then there's something to be said for the bitter and esoteric flavor. The same family's been making this specific liqueur. And those are the types of drinks that I really get into. You've taught us how to do a gin martini. Gin martini. But you also are gonna select craft cocktails for each of us to try and you have to show us one yourself. Yes. This is called a white lady. A white lady is gin, curacao, lemon juice, and egg white. Why she gotta be white? That's uh, just the is sign she, of the times. Is it the color of the yes. drink? Got yeah, it. yeah, got it. Think more lady in white. Two ounces of gin, three quarter ounce of lemon juice. Three quarter. Three quarter ounces of our house-made curacao. Three quarters is that line right there. Crack the egg and separate the egg white into the container. Oh, wow. That was good, Eugene. Except you got egg white on the side. Oh, oh, oh careful! Oh. Did you get any in there? I got it. Ice into the small one. Pop that on top. No, you can't! There's an egg in there! Shake it good and hard. Come on and shake it, shake it. Oh, no! What happened? Oh, no. The egg, egg just blooped right out. We can oh. save it, we can save it, we can save it! And now here's where it gets interesting. Oh, now. To incorporate air into the egg is strain it back into the small tin, close it again, and then you're gonna shake it without any ice. And what this does is it gets oxygen and air into it, and it causes that egg to form that nice, rich foam that you see in egg white cocktails. Like you're whipping egg whites. Yeah, like you're making a meringue, frothy and More like meringue. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that was so good. Did you guys hear that? Can we play that back? More like meringue. Merengue. And then you're going to strain it back in. Nice and smooth. That's why she gotta be white. It looks like wow. milk. She white, she's so white. And then just a little bit of absinthe. Aww. And that is a white lady. Are we allowed to try the white lady? Please do. Well, I Best know. first. We're they, married to white ladies. So. They get to try white ladies all the time. Give Eugene a taste. <laughs> Wow, that's really good. Thank you. Mm. It's delicious. Incredible, it's like citrusy. You don't think of an egg drink being refreshing. <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah. Uh, I think Zach's got some egg uh, on his face. Uh, so how much would someone shell out for a drink like this? Uh, boo. I mean, I am curious. I am curious. Was uh, this like $18? Uh, no, nah, more like a dozen. <laughs> All right, so going into the competition, he looks the best at this point. Wash line is good, the froth is good, the bubbles are small. And in the Antoinette, oh my god. All right, let's get yeah. to the competition. Let's do it. And shake. shake. shake it. All right, gentlemen, here we go for the competition part of this. In my hand, I have the cocktails you're gonna be making. The first cocktail is the same across the board. The second cocktail is one of our house specials. I have a non-alcoholic drink for you for the awesome. second one. The ingredients and the instructions are all in there on exactly how to do it and build it and what it should look like at the end. You're gonna be graded on time, cool under pressure, technique, taste, and uh, most importantly, who has the most visually pleasing cocktail. When you win, you will get to make one final punch bowl and light it on fire. Wow. 
One of us gets to be a master of fire. fire. Good luck, Ned. Good luck, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> the representative from Team Drunk, the representative from Team Sober. Are you ready? Yeah, it's like Hunger Games, yeah. except with drinking. Three, two, one. one. Kentucky Maid. Kentucky Maid. The Kentucky Maid is going to be two ounces of Kentucky straight bourbon, one ounce of lime juice, three quarter ounce of simple syrup, three to four cucumber slices, and mint. Bourbon, 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 bourbon. bourbon, bourbon. This one looks bourbon. Like bourbon. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to my bar. Oh, <laughs> I went to that same high school. That's crazy. Small world. One ounce of lime. Oh, that's funny. Three quarter simple syrup. I've never muddled something before. Oh, in the small shaker it said. I already fucked up. Ten mint leaves. That's so many mints. I think I did four ounces of bourbon. Oh, you did that one twice? Yeah, I think so. It's gonna be a good drink. Yeah. I may. I, I want to make it strong for you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really focused, and I love it. Rocks glasses are gonna be right there. Oh boy. Over ice. No. Yeah, big ice. Big you got a, you got big a big ice. cube. Go for it. Use the hold the tea strainer like above like the glass. This. Hold the tea strainer above the glass and strain into the tea strainer. Yeah. Very good. Very good. How you doing over there, Sobersville? I'm doing okay. I just anytime that time gets added to something, I start to second guess. So. Sprig push through a cucumber slice. Little tree on an island. And here you are, sir. Oh, the ice, the ice. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little off the top. Calm and cool under pressure. There you go. Sam Cook, two ounce brown butter infused rum. Sam Cook is going to be muddled mint, a brown butter infused rum, lime juice, grapefruit juice, honey, and an allspice tincture. This isn't a mixed drink, it's just all made into Built the glass. Built in glass, yeah. Well, goodbye. So I'm making a summer wind. It's a bunch of rum. It looks like it's got a little whipped cream going on. The summer wind is well rum, rum bar overproof Jamaican rum, Dr. Bird, Aloha mix, which is a caramelized pineapple coconut sugar mix with blue curacao and passion fruit liqueur, lime juice and pineapple juice. It's going to be shaken and then strained over a coconut cream whip. Is this rum? That's rum. All right, uh, I'm a little nervous at this point. Quarter ounce rum bar overproof. Back left bottom shelf. What are you talking about? Rum bar overproof? Rum bar overproof rum is the name of the rum you're looking for. Oh, okay. So do you like board games? We got a lot over there to the side. Welcome to the bar. What do I do when I pour too much? Drink some of it? I just yeah. poured a half of it. <laughs> pour a little bit out. Close enough. No one's no one's ever upset about a little extra rum, huh? Dr. Bird rum. What a great name. Brown butter and cheese rum. 636. You guys are killing me. The tables are thirsty. This? The people are waiting. What the hell is Aloha mix? <laughs> oh my god! You found it! Oh, it's green. So you just went to Hawaii, huh? Now you want a little taste of it? I get it. That's fun. Yeah, I went to Hawaii with the wife once. All right, he's getting close. Pineapple? How are you doing? Pineapple right here. Really depends on who's gonna finish right there's good. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Togo to coconut, yeah, time. Where's a wooden spoon? There we go. Done. 9.45. 9.45 time. Woo. All right. All right. One ounce bourbon for the Love Me Tender. The Love Me Tender is a blend of Kentucky Straight Bourbon and Laird's Bonded Apple Brandy, strawberry gnome syrup, apple cider vinegar, and egg white, as well as lemon and mint sprigs. Okay, so this is my mocktail. Oh, geez, now I have to remember what's what. I remember this one is pineapple. Yep. This one is lemon. Okay, yep. One ounce of lemon. Coming right up, sir. Zach's mocktail is going to be lemon juice, pineapple juice, orange juice, rose hip, hibiscus, or jacques, and topped with ginger beer, and then garnished with mint. Three quarter ounce of pineapple. Now, I love pineapple. I might give a little extra. Now, five ounce of rose hip or orgy. One ounce strawberry gom, gom? Apple cider vinegar mix with strawberry. That sounds delicious. Wow, I'm just playing juice god over here. You want some juice? I got some juice. How you doing over there, Eugene? Oh, pretty well. Yeah. Break an egg in it? I did. Just, uh, here, just you broke an egg! It. I broke an egg. Just dump it and I start over. Yes! Nailed Character it. growth! Pop it in the bottom. 
And now we are going to dump in a highball, which I just learned this is a highball. It's not a euphemism for cocaine, which is what I thought. And now top with ginger beer. That is such a pretty color. Of course, I'm an eco-friendly boy. Metal straws. Time for Zach. The black ball pick. Mr. pushed in behind. I'm trying to draw the hearts into the egg white. Not quite working. Time's ticking. Okay. <laughs> That's as best I could do. Ugh, I guess I was the slowest, man. All right, Eugene was the slowest, but you got a lot of other points. All right, for Ned's Kentucky Made. On presentation, little wonky. The mint could have been pulled through a little bit more. See how it tastes? That's really nice. Oh, yeah, it's right, refreshing. Right, it's it's great. a great summer drink. Keith, again, the mint could have been pulled through a little bit more, a little bit more bushy, a little bit more uh, bright. Also very good. You did use a little bit too much citrus when you were mm -hmm. pouring it, some poured over, mm -hmm. so that's why it's a little bit too tart. Mm -hmm. Very nice, that one's a little more citrusy. This one's got a little bit more better balance to it, so for the Kentucky Made, I'm gonna give it to Ned. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so presentation, fantastic. You pulled the mint down, you picked a good, nice, full sprig. It's nice and, and bushy and it stands up on its own. Very good, uh, it's a little on the tart side. That's very good, the bourbon comes through nice and clean. You get, uh, you get the citrus, you get the cucumber. Point to Eugene for that one. Whew. This is our Sam Cook. This is one of our house specialty drinks. You followed all those steps except for one, which was to swizzle it without disturbing the mint. Very nice, very well done. Keith, the color on this is perfect. You absolutely nailed it. You did the right amount of coconut cream. I watched you follow all of the uh, instructions. That is good. Uh, the overproof rum's a little strong. Mm. For the signature drink, I'm gonna give that one to Keith. Nice all right, job, Keith. So, so right now though, you're ahead because of time for presentation and for calm under pressure. Also gonna give that one to Ned. Keith had a lot of running around looking for stuff, couldn't find the rum, started run wondering what's he looking for. Was, didn't know where it was. Didn't, it happens when you're working in a new bar. Don't it happens drink to rum. everybody. First night, first night behind the stick, it's hard. Everyone gets it. However, I gotta give Keith an extra point for the bow tie. Excellent. <laughs> excellent, excellent touch, excellent touch. I'm gonna try this one over here. It's very sweet. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's very thick too. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's a lot of juice. I, I don't know if I need to point this out, but that's a decimal point. <laughs> <We're all laughs> so everything that you did five ounces of Wait, should have been a half. half an ounce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's just syrup. Yeah, that's syrup. Yeah, that's well, I, you know, I got those ones hey, right. Hey, you, you, you won the speed. Well, to be fair, this is one of our more complex drinks. It has a lot of different ingredients to it and a lot of different steps. You performed well under pressure, and you get an extra point for putting it back as well. For the cocktail itself, your initial shake wasn't quite hard enough, so you didn't mm. quite emulsify the egg white on it. So you didn't build up that really nice frothy foam yeah, that should have been on top. Should have shaken it longer and harder. Yeah. All right, so gentlemen, Based on attention to detail, speed, under pressure, final product, presentation. In fourth place, you did very well on time. However, the attention to detail wasn't quite there. Zach, I'm sorry, but your mocktail was just a little bit rough. Yeah. In third place, you did very well under pressure. You had a little bit over on time. Eugene, you're gonna be in third. It was real close, it was really close, it really came down to the wire. And then in first place, you did well on time, the final presentation looked really good, you were calm under pressure. Ned. Whoa! Oh, oh, thank you, thank oh. you. Call Pitbull, cause it's time for a fireball. Oh, I get to do a fire drink, I forgot. I'm a little toasty to be honest, I feel great. I had an awesome time. I get why you guys like watching Try Guys videos, they're hilarious. Every time we make something in Try Guys videos, I put alcohol in when it's not supposed to be there, and then I win. And this is the first time we have a video where I'm supposed to put alcohol in something, and I lose. What fucked up universe is this? Next time you're at a bar and you're like, why are they taking so long? It's because they're making art, goddammit. This is art. I won! This is great! I feel amazing! I used to be a wine guy, but after this, I'm a cocktail guy. Make sure to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>